Hi, this is Dan Lexi from Dan Schultz Outdoors, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. Hey y'all, I'm Johnny. And I'm Colleen. And, and we're, we're the Keel Quest. Quest. And, and we, we want, want you to keep, to keep the, the adventures alive. alive. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, this is Darren from My Paddle Repeat, encouraging you to keep the adventures alive. This is David from Beastly Ironworks saying keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Dan Mayot. Keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Kevin Collin, the Happy Camper. Remember, keep the adventures alive. Awesome! Woo, buddy! Shug here! Keep the adventures alive. I am. Ethan here, the Avid Outdoorsy Guy, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. We're John and Aaron. Keep the adventures alive. Hey everyone, it's Kylan from Lure of the North and I encourage you to keep the adventures alive. This is Sky North telling you Keep the adventures alive. And now on with the show. Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. My name is Dennis, also known as Canoe Hound. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Uh, if this is your first time, you know what? I hope you enjoy the show enough that you might hit that thumbs up and maybe hit a subscribe. I'm getting really close to hitting that 5,000 subscriber mark. And uh, hopefully uh, for those of you that might not already be subscribed, like I say, maybe you'll bring me one subscription closer to that. Uh, let's see here. We are live here every seven, every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. And uh, we're always trying to bring you the best content that we can uh, related to the outdoors, uh, whether it's uh, winter camping, canoeing, hiking, backpacking. Heck, I'm even trying to get a, uh, a, a, a cycling camper on the show as well so we got a lot uh coming up here hopefully uh for the rest of this year well only this episode and one more for this year and then uh, we'll be back in january to bring you some uh new exciting content i uh, see the uh chat over there is uh starting to fill up so while uh everybody's coming in and getting themselves all comfortable and settled in i am going to uh drop in a bit of news and things that are going on uh that uh will keep you a little bit up to date First, I always like to uh, start by uh, thanking my sponsors um, and uh, welcoming, welcoming them to the show. I'm tripping over my tongue tonight already. Uh, our good friends over at Algonquin Outfitters are celebrating their 60th year in business. They just recently uh, finished their, their big giveaway. And if you haven't already uh, found out, maybe, maybe you were one of the winners if you happen to be watching tonight. But you can go to their website and you can actually see who the winners were uh, from their big contest. So go on over there, check them out. The uh, link to their website is down in the description below, just as all my sponsors are. Uh, our other Another sponsor, Kid Products, they're the makers of the Kid uh, Twig Stove and Reflector Oven. Uh, thanks very much, guys. I appreciate it. You can check them out at www.kidproducts.com. 
uh you know what pick yourself up a cool reflector oven for uh for yourself or for your loved one there and uh do a little bit of baking around the uh the campfire uh they always make it really 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 nice treat if you're doing cinnamon buns or something along that lines in there so yeah uh also hunter and harris paddles makers of high quality canoe paddles and you know what i'm very excited and happy to announce that um one of our sponsors who kind of just drifted off right and you might not have heard from them for in, in, for quite a while and there was a good reason uh company is now called whitewater coffee and crew and they were formerly known as the backcountry coffee company and uh they are back with the show again and a little toast to them thanks very much for coming on they've uh, rebranded some of their coffees they've rebranded their their business and their new website is actually www.whitewatercrew.com let me just pop up uh, here on screen while I'm talking about it. There we go. There's some information. If anybody's looking to get some really fresh home brewed coffee or uh, home yeah, roasted coffee uh, for, for the back country or at home, you know what? By all means, check them out at whitewatercrew.com. Uh, they've got a bunch of selections. They've got all kinds of really cool swag as well. And uh, it's all related to the back country. So by all means, please do check them out. And also our good friends over at Great Signs and Graphics are the ones that take care of all our cool swag and, uh, you know, things like hats and backgrounds and shirts and all kinds of neat stuff like that. So you can check them out at uh, greatsigns.ca. Uh, let's see here. Last week, if you missed last week's show, we were talking with uh, Kylan Marone from uh, Lure of the North. And we got a little bit of a status update as to Lure of the North and what's going on with their retail store. Uh, they are closing it up for a while because they're looking to focus their business on something a little bit different. And the big focus for them right now is a 700 kilometer, 90 day snowshoe trek across Northern Ontario, which is going to take them from like Lake Superior all the way up to Moosonee type of thing, following the, um, the Mizunabi river system all the way up is really, really cool. Uh, 90 days, 700 kilometers in the freezing cold. That's an amazing, amazing, amazing feat. Hopefully they have all the snow in this warm weather that we're having down here in Southern Niagara. doesn't uh, affect them up there in uh, Northern Ontario because I know things are a little bit warm everywhere right now and considering the time of year, right? But if you missed that show, by all means, go into the playlist. You'll see it's right in the description here uh, underneath the video. Check it out. Uh, you can do that after. But uh, go check out our season, season three playlist and season two playlist, and you'll see all kinds of great shows that we've had in the past. Uh, some great guests like Survivor Man and the Baird Brothers, and the list goes on and on and on. So by all means, please do check that out. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a Kevin Callan celebrity roast for his birthday. And uh, many of you have heard about this already. Well, we decided that uh, we wanted to do this celebrity roast for a cause, for a charity, which was Project Canoe. And based on doing that, uh, we designed these uh, these decals, which are like, you know, you put them on your water bottles, you know, similar to, to that there, right? You can put them on your water bottles, food barrels, uh, bumper of your car, heck, even on Granny's forehead, if you like, right? But... Uh, these are our way of raising a bit of money for Project Canoe. All proceeds or all, all profits go to uh, Project Canoe. And to date, we have raised $185. Okay. And we do have a good handful of these left. So if any of you have missed or been thinking or on the fence about buying it, it's going to support a great cause. It's going to get uh, some youth that may not otherwise get the opportunity to get out on a canoe trip. Let's send a send a young fella or a young gal out into the back country to do the things that we love to do. Uh, what what kind of like that? That's a great experience. And all the cost is ten dollars. Uh, I'll put this up on the screen here. Cost you ten dollars. All profits go into Project Canoe. Um, all you need to do is go to my website, canoehoundadventures.com. Uh, you can take a look at the chat at the very top up there. You'll see uh, highlighted in blue if you're watching on YouTube. Click on that. It'll, the link will take you right to the page where you can buy it. Shipping's included, tax included. Uh, it's $10 flat rate. There you go. And uh, buy many. Buy a couple. Buy two or three. Give them to your kids or any Canoe Hound fan uh, or Kevin Callan fan that uh, you know uses stickers on their water bottles. It's a great way to decorate them anyways. So, yeah, that's what we got there. Uh, let's, uh, let's try and get ourselves up around $250, and that'll really help send... Uh, a deserving youth into the backcountry. 
Uh, a couple more quick things. Just a quick member shout out. Thanks to all my supporters out there who uh, shoot me super chats. That's hitting that little dollar sign down there. Uh, you know, buy me a coffee, uh, anything like that. Our channel members. Uh, thanks very much to all of you for your support. Uh, once again, all the money that comes into us basically goes back into producing this show. Uh, believe it or not, there are costs involved with it. A lot of time goes into producing these shows and uh, all the time behind the scenes that you don't really see. It really helps. And then, you know what? It puts the odd beer in my belly here and there. I will not lie. Okay, so that, that's all good. But uh, yeah, so if you can, for as little as 13 cents a day, you could actually help support the channel. Uh, you can find out more about that by clicking the join button down below the microphone here. So yeah. And let's see here. Two or three more quick little things upcoming on the show. Uh, next week, we are having our holiday our, our, our holiday season uh, extravaganza. We're going to invite back a few of our uh, past guests onto the show. Just going to have a fun night. We'll invite some of our, our viewers up here on panel. A little bit of chit-chat, a little bit of banter, uh, no specific topic in mind. Just going to be a fun evening. Come and join us. Spread some holiday cheer. Grab a, an eggnog in your rum or your hot chocolate or whatever it is you might like. Start up the fireplace and just sit back, relax, and enjoy a, a nice festive evening with us. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, really cool for me, and it's going to be my first time uh, that this is actually going to be happening on uh, Thursday, this Thursday. For those of you that are familiar with Paddling Adventures Radio, the podcast, uh, yours truly is going to be on the show. So by all means, tune in to Paddling Adventures Radio uh, Thursday, and it'll be in their library forever and ever and ever. So there's my claim to fame. Um, I'm going to be joining Sean and uh, Derek, and uh, yeah, we're going to be, I believe they're doing a season review. So uh, I'm just going to be part of that there. So I hope to see you, or I hope to hear you, or at least know you listen. That'd be a cool thing. And yeah, that's probably about that for that. Uh, what else we got? Facebook. Follow us on Facebook over the holidays. You'll know exactly what we got coming up in January uh, for guests, times, and dates. So uh, you'll want to keep in tune there. You can go to uh, Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show on Facebook, and you'll find out all that information. And once again, if you have any hot topics or uh, uh, guests that you would like to see on the show, please do drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com. Let me know. Uh, tonight's guest, there again, just like the last couple of weeks, is a direct uh, response to receiving this, uh, these requests from people like yourself. So let us know what you like to see on the show and, uh, we'll try our darndest to make it happen. All right. And then, uh, after the eight o'clock hour, just like usual, we'll open up the panel for anybody that might want to come and ask our guests tonight a question or two, uh, maybe share a little story with each other and, uh, we'll move on from there. So without further ado, this is why we're all here, and uh, let's get on with the uh, the topic and the guest of tonight. Uh, tonight's guest has a popular YouTube channel that focuses on canoe tripping, backcountry camping, and bushcraft. He also he's also an experienced canoe builder, photographer, and traveler who spends time exploring outdoor landscapes. Please welcome to the live stream, Jason Eek. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Thanks good, for having me. Good. Good. You're still awake after that huge, huge intro. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to doze, to be honest, but no, I'm good. That's okay. I, I, I have that effect on people, Jason. So you're not alone. You're not alone. So how are you doing these days, man? You, you keeping yourself busy? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah busy. Really busy. Yeah. 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 It's the time of year. Everybody's busy, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, you do any winter camping at all? Um, or is it strictly pretty much a summer type of thing? Yeah, like every year I tend to go out, you know, a few times in winter, but uh, I don't know if I will this year. Uh, I have other plans that will see me away from the cold. Um, but uh, yeah, last year I went out, uh, did some hot tending, and uh, I've got a four-season tent as well. So mm -hmm. I actually prefer the four-season tent over the hot tent type of uh, deal. But yeah, yeah, it's good. Go for a hike, spend the night. Yeah. 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 Nothing wrong with that. You know what? Sometimes the, the short trips are uh, all that much better, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So what's, what's keeping you busy these days? Are you uh, doing a lot of editing right now or, you know? Yeah, actually that's the big thing. So uh, I, uh, I tend to do that. So my videos, like what I'm releasing now, I think it was shot in August and those trips are all edited up, but I've got, I think four more videos to edit right now before moving on to the next project. And uh, yeah, I just spent a month and a half out on the East coast. So that took nice. up a lot of time as well, but 
Yeah. Do any paddling out there? No, I wish. Actually, I saw this. Uh, I wish I had a link to share. You mentioned it, but I saw this incredible location. Anybody could probably find it on Airbnb, but uh, didn't uh, go there. But I'm definitely going to go back. You know, nice cabin somewhere in the southeast corner of Nova Scotia. And nice. it's a paddle in destination. Looks really good. That area is so nice. Eh? I, I, I've got uh, I've got a few people that I know that are actually moving out east, right? They're just trying to get a rate, get away from the rat race around here. Yeah. You know, they're trying to get back to a simpler life that they they currently still have out there, and that's yeah. a that's kind of a nice thing. I I wish I could do the same thing sometimes, but uh, you know, commitments. commitments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It was my first time being out on the East Coast. So I lived out on the West Coast for a few years when I was younger. Never been out east, so had to get out there and yeah, I was blown away. Yeah. Really oh, nice. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. So you, you've got that many, many trip videos under your belt from this year that you're, you're still editing. Cause I, we were talking in the green room and you had mentioned um, from your, uh, your six day Algonquin park solo trip mm. that, uh, that you, they're already edited in the can and scheduled to go up. Right. So yeah. they're releasing like once a week type of thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Was it a, five day trip or a six day trip? I think it was a six day trip, six days. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Six days. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, when you're, you know, you, if you do a trip a month and if you go away for six days and you release a video a week. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. And it, it's, it's pretty, your, your editing style is like uh really smooth and polished. Eh? Like you're, you're using some good equipment obviously because your, your shots are like, uh, you know, they're primo type of thing. What type, what type of equipment are you using? Yeah, I appreciate that. And this year, actually, I'm disappointed with how a lot of the videos turned out. Um, I shoot with a, it's a micro four thirds camera, a Panasonic GH5. So that's my good camera. It's all the shots that look really good. That's where they come from. This year, I picked up two GoPros, started using them. And uh, yeah, I just gave them away. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Eh? So, yeah, you're, you're, some people are are sold on them, and some people find them. Yeah, the, not uh, yeah, they not, just not good enough, right? Like, yeah, like they, fine tune them. Yeah. That's the thing. Like they, if I wasn't using both footage, you know, uh, it would be good enough. But when you have the really nice shots from the GH5 that are, you know, crystal clear and you know just beautiful footage. And then you have what the GoPro provides. It I just can't get it to match close enough. So mm -hmm. I have high expectations. So yeah. And where where does that come from? Like, do you have a do you have a like a broadcasting background or something? Or no, I just uh, uh, no, I'm self taught. But uh, no, I just have high expectations of myself and life in general. So <laughs> good, good. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. So like, you've had no formal training whatsoever. Just all self taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, am, I am too, and I'm nowhere near as polished when it comes to the video quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had like I've been fortunate to meet people here and there who have more experience than me, who gave me pointers. But yeah, yeah. So. yeah. We did a show uh, probably year year and a half ago. Uh, we had like Chris Prouse on. Um, right. Actually, I think Jason Er. There, there, we had a we had a few uh, like people that are really into it. Uh, ben mm -hmm. Stacy was on, and Matt Hahn. They're, they all work in the industry. Right. And that was a, like a very well viewed show because so many people are trying to learn how to do it. Something like, you know, there's so much that goes into it and all mm -hmm. the different programs. And we'll, we won't even talk about like the, the camera gear itself, right. but just the editing techniques. There's so much that goes into it that yeah. people are just trying to absorb that. And you can see those that, that pick it up and they, they run with it. And then you can see those that, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that really struggle with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that it's not, it's as complicated as you make it, right? Just like everything. So I think that there's, if you learn some, you know, basic techniques, some composition and, you know, get, you know, watch some YouTube videos on, you know, how to make film and stuff like that. So you understand just different camera angles and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then film as much as you can and then sort through it and pick out the good stuff and get rid of the shit. Then it's all good. Yeah. yeah. And do you, do you, uh, end up with a lot of the crap or like, do you, do you try Are you, do you, are you a regimented 
video shooter when you're out there? Do you like have a storyline in mind as you're shooting? Uh, usually the storyline disappears. Like there's been a few things where the story is kind of worked out, but yeah, like canoe trips, it's, you know what I mean? Like you don't know what, they say the weather's going to be sunny and then it rains, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you just kind of have to go with it and just tell the story as it happens. But, um, yeah, no, for me, it's more about, like, I do have certain, you know, camera angles that I try to get, you know, try to get the like the wide angle, the landscape type of establishing shot and then move in closer to get more detail, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I try to do that many times and then action kind of shots as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Listen and learn everybody. This is, this is good advice that we're getting right now. This is gold. Eh? Let, let me make notes here. I'm taking notes. <laughs> too, so. <laughs> so what's, what's your inspiration to like, okay, you, you like, we were talking earlier as well. Um, and we'll, we'll probably get into like, you know, the crown land versus provincial park thing, but you, you mentioned that, uh, like, you know, you like to, you like to travel in provincial parks. Right. What, what's your inspiration for actually traveling there and wanting to share it with everybody? Is it, uh, you're documenting for yourself in the future or is this something that you just enjoy sharing with people? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it is mostly documenting for myself. That's how it, well, not really. That's not how it started. The whole YouTube thing started out just because I was building a canoe and a friend told me that I should put it on YouTube. Um, so that's how I got started with that. But even before that I had a camera and like everybody, you know, you have a camera and you take photos or video just to remember your life. And, uh, YouTube is a good platform that I can share that, you know, whether people watch it or not, I don't really care. It's more, you know, for me to look at and, you know, maybe my kids or my grandkids down the road and yeah, that's yeah. It. it's not it, like, don't get me wrong. I appreciate that people, the people who do tolerate my videos and watch them, I appreciate it, but yeah, it's more about uh, just, you know, I enjoy doing the the projects or the trips and, I like having a camera in my hand and like telling a story and that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and you must be doing something right. Because like I say, you're sitting around 25, just under 25,000 subscribers. So how long you been on, how, how long you've been doing the uh, YouTube scene here? Uh, a long time. Yeah. So yeah. I, I started like, uh, like nine years ago. Um, but the funny thing is that I started and I did that. Nobody, nobody go and look at the first canoe build videos because they're still online and they're absolutely horrible um but i did those and then i forgot about it for years and then i went back and discovered that people were actually watching them so mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's a there's a lot of us out there that like these types of things that's why yeah. it's probably <laughs> the only reason this show is exist existing yeah, right? Surprise, because, surprise, uh, right? yeah. yeah it, it might not be a huge niche but uh there is a niche out there for it right and uh you know, it doesn't matter how many Algonquin Park videos you put out there. If it's got the word Algonquin Park attached to it, people are going to watch it because people have a love for Algonquin Park and what right. they do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so your your most current uh, video series that you got right now, I think you're up to part four out there. It's called Algonquin Park Six Day Solo Canoe Trip. And you're putting a focus on, you know, day one. And these are the lakes and the, the rivers you've traveled. Here's my campsite and stuff like that. And they, like, you know, all the way through. Uh, is it, You mentioned that one of them lakes was your favorite lake and your favorite campsite. Was that Daisy Lake? Yeah, uh, not necessarily my favorite lake, but uh, I do. So one thing, one thing I've learned, you know, 40 years later is that uh, it's great to travel deep into areas, but you don't always have to go deep in and daisy's one of those nice sort of uh locations that like you can get into daisy lake you know within an hour two two short portages um but then when you're out there it's nice you know and that campsite particularly it's gotta have if not the best sunset of the entire park it's got to be within the top two or three it just it you know if anyone knows daisy lake uh you enter in off of ham hambone well actually off of it's hambone then pond and then there's a portage and then the uh daisy lake kind of like comes in narrow and then widens out into the main uh, daisy lake itself so this campsite the sun sets 
right down that passage. So when you're in camp, it just, you know, it's got those, that depth that just looks incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. Got that, that kind of a long V that goes yeah. way down. Eh, like, like yeah. That. Like you have behind you kind of, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah, now that's uh yeah that's that's a, a lake called Molly Lake up by uh Gogama, Ontario. Okay. Nice. So a, it was one of my favorite places. That and my dog's name is Molly, so I had to have that's yeah. part of the canoe hound type of thing, right? Yeah, sweet. But, so do do I do do I kind of get this idea right? Uh, and now this is from the series that you got out or that you're running right now. Uh, sorry, dogs crawling under me now. Uh, you uh, you mentioned in the videos a couple times that you you like to explore parts of the lake that haven't been explored. Typically, most people, if they're on a canoe route or something, eh, they they follow that line on the map, right. right? Come on the lake here and get off the lake there. Go to the next lake type of thing. Is it right. is it something that you like to do, or is that something you usually do? Is explore a whole lake, or depends on the trip. Yeah, it depends on the trip, right, and the how many kilometers you got to put in a day. But it is something that I like, and like everybody trips, you know, you trip how you want to trip, and everybody trip how they want to trip. Yeah. For me, uh, I'm not in a hurry to, you know, just be lined to, you know, the furthest part or whatever. Um, and I guess it kind of it, it relates to the camera as well. Uh, what when I'm out there and when I'm shooting, uh, it's the same thing. I want to look for those special places in each spot, you know? Um, so yeah, I want to take the time, you know, it's that, you know, discovering those little things that someone else might've missed. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's the one thing, like, uh, sometimes a longer trip, right? Uh, yeah. Depending on your duration of time and the distance of the trip, sometimes you have to follow that line across that right. lake, right? Yeah. But sometimes it's really cool just to take a shorter trip and explore. Even if you do like a base camp and then, you know, day trip to another lake and poke your nose around and stuff like that. Uh, my buddies and I just did that up in Naganosh, you know, early November. Um, we went up there, base camped, and then we got to paddle around Naganosh Lake and yep. you know, check out some portages, do, treat them like a, a hiking trail type of thing, right? So it's a great opportunity to uh, to see what you might not normally see if you just follow that line, right? For sure. That's a beautiful park. It is. It is. not. You know what? Uh, I've been... It's not too often I'll go to the same place twice. Uh, I like exploring new places, but <laughs> I've been there twice in the last two years, and I will be back there again just because it's uh, it's that type of a trip where you can just go exploring. There's there's a lot of hidden gems in that area. Yeah, there is. Yeah, lots, tons. Yeah, yeah like I guess do like from back in the logging days. Like mm -hmm. if you, if anybody watched my last video on Naganash, you see we come across like this old truck sitting in the middle of the forest. Uh, what was supposed to be my thumbnail, me sitting on a lawnmower <laughs> yeah. on a portage, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's just amazing. There's, um, I guess it's a steep history and probably part of one of the reasons why it's actually a provincial park, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you've been there a few times, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was there this, I was there this year and uh, yeah, it was actually the last, hmm, did we go there last year? I think we went there last year as well. Um, and I, I really can't remember how many times I've been there. I, two or three times now. Yeah. Um, I think just twice. Um, and yeah, I'll be back this coming summer. Like I'm already, I don't know if it'll be July or if it'll be August, but. Yeah. yeah. Great, great place to go in the fall because there's a lot of, uh, it's not all pine trees, right? It's not all right. coniferous. There's a, uh, there's a lot of like, you know, your, 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 um, your birches and uh, some maple and stuff like that. So you do get a lot of nice fall co colors out there. That's when I kind of like to go. And yeah. now that you mentioned it too, I, I do remember watching your video uh, series on Naganosh too. So yeah. Yeah. yeah it was actually the, the first trip was in, uh, what was it? Late October. I think it was Derek would know better, but uh, went out with Derek and yeah, it was the, you're right. The colors were just spectacular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, one of the things I like about your videos too, is, uh, how you, th you throw your bloopers in there once in a while. Right. Uh, I think it was Sorry. episode one of this. <laughs> Sorry, man. I, I got to point it out there. You kept, you kept tripping over bear country. Is yeah. it, it took you like three or four tries to get that one out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. I can't say it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and it's funny because, uh, so stuff like that, it's, it's good because it's, you know, me screwing up and it's easy for me to include, but there's so many bloopers that I wish I could include that the camera's just not rolling, you know, or, right, right. you know, or accidents or whatever it's, 
you know, I was, uh, when I was filming, I shouldn't admit to it, but, uh, you know, I went for a hike out in the East coast and, uh, very rugged terrain. And I was out by myself and, uh, had the, had the tripod over my shoulder, um, going down the steep hill, big rocks, stepping from rock to rock. And it was raining for like three or four days the day before. So everything's slippery. And I'm looking around and I think, oh, this would be a great spot. Set a camera up over there. And right then I slipped and oh, he went out from under you. Somebody pulled the carpet oh, yeah. out from under you. You know, and then I'm lying there on these rocks thinking, oh, if only that camera was set up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody wants those highlight bloopers eh? as long as you don't get too injured or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. That quick note to everybody about that too is, uh, you know what? When you're when you're hiking or when you're on a portage trail and you get that white lichen moss or what do they call it, caribou moss, mm, yeah, that stuff on a wet slope can you? I'm telling you, you will not find anything more slippery than that. Uh, we on our big trip this year uh, up uh, West Spanish Forest, all well four four of the six guys on this uh, in our party all wiped out right in the same area just because there's a slope. It had rained all day before. And you, you can't tell you step on it and you just go, wow. And, I, <laughs> and unless you have your backpack on or something, the landing isn't very soft, right? So yeah, no, never is. Yeah. So what, what do you got in the can right now? What do you, uh, you're, you said you got a couple of videos to edit. Is there anything you can share with us as far as uh, destinations or, or lo like, you know, locales? Yeah. Or? Well, there's going to be uh, this. I actually have a full canoe trip that I did. When was it? Oh, it was the last one of the year. It was either September or October. And uh, I think it was September because I was going to do another one. So this year I did a lot in, in Algonquin. I usually don't do so much, but uh, the previous year I didn't go there at all, I don't think. And I thought, okay, I'll go and spend some time. And uh, I do have another canoe trip out there that uh, I don't even know if I'll edit. <laughs> right. It, it, I, I was disappointed with Algonquin this year and uh, the trip was like, there were, I would say like highlight moments where they were sketchy for me, but uh, you know, all up, it was kind of boring trip, you know, alone mm -hmm. and nobody and no wildlife or anything. So it was nice to be yeah. out there, but yeah, we'll see. But then, uh, yeah, I've got three or four videos from being out East to do and, then another one. I've got an announcement video to make. I'm not going to tell you about that, but well, you got to keep some things a mystery, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what, what was your what was your disappointment with Algonquin? Uh, was it like uh, to do with the numbers in there? Or? Yeah, the numbers, all, like that, like that's the bottom line. The numbers and the you know the lack of uh, consideration of people. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'd say a lack of education, but you know, I don't think that you need to educate people to not chop on trees or leave garbage lying around or put fires out. I think that's pretty common sense. So, yeah. Right? Yeah. Cause you, you really mentioned that there in the series that you're out going now, you, you video, you recorded some of the garbage you found on the portage, yeah. uh, a couple instances with fire pits, still, still aflame, not just smoking, but still yeah. aflame. Right. Yeah. Wow. Did you, did you see people, uh, that were just leaving that area or well, so, uh, <laughs> I guess I, I guess I can say so. I did. Uh, hmm, did I film that or or I filmed it? But has it been released yet? So one of the last campsites that I was on on this uh, six day trip, um, I did actually see two ladies and on the lake. I was paddling around looking for where to camp, and they stopped you know, we're both floating our boats and they stopped and said how great their campsite was and that they just left. And I paddled back and sure enough, smoke coming out of the oh, yeah. fire, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. 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 Make you want to chase them down. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So if you're watching, you didn't put out the fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But put out your fires, people. Every, I think most people in this, uh, in this live stream tonight have, uh, heard, heard and watched enough about the, the garbage thing and the, yeah. you know, the whole, uh, the whole, uh, mm -hmm. uh Poop in, poop in the thunder box, not yeah. on the campsite, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Or at least uh, dig and bury it, you know, but don't just leave it lying around. 
Yeah. Here, here's uh, Al- Alan saying his favorite line from Jason this year, do not bring a grill to Algonquin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think the last time I was in Algonquin there, um, uh, there had to be on the one campsite. Like you, you could have collected for scrap metal and probably yeah. got five bucks worth of, you know, and there, stuff like that doesn't go very expensive, right? So, yeah, yeah man. Maybe the girls at home. Yeah. This this summer I'll head back there and uh, I'll do a video on uh, how to make a grill craft shelter. A grill craft. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's going to steal your idea. You know that, right? <laughs> you know what? Carrying a grill in is not a bad idea. If if it's a grill that's a portable grill that travels with you, right? Right. Like, yeah. Uh, you see these little tiny things now that, that right. people carry around because really that's all you need. Um, and if not, just put a stick through your stake and hang it over right. a fire, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Or right on the coals is fine, you know. Yeah, you don't have to worry about all the contamination. A lot of people don't know about the, the bad contaminants that come out of grills from refrigerators. Right. Because they're not made, they're not made for heat, right? So, yeah. And actually, a lot of I've seen, I don't know where you get them. Probably from like I don't know a giant tiger or something. But there's a uh, other ones I've seen out there a lot that, you know, they've got the legs that fold out. Oh yeah, yeah. Use yeah. them yeah. once and they just all warp and everything. Yeah. And I just think, who I wouldn't want to cook on that. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're they're coming from overseas, and who knows how they're made over there too, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So you, you would like to emphasis uh, a lot in your videos too on, uh, on bushcraft. Eh? You do uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you're not craft. You actually have a, a channel that is dedicated just to knots, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So yeah, like to me, uh, to me, it's just playing, you know what I mean? It's how most of us boys anyway, probably girls too, started out playing in the backyard, building a mm-hmm. fort, right? Yeah. So it's just working on that and enjoying it. So, yeah, because yeah, uh, bushcraft and, and canoeing, they, they, they kind of go hand in hand, right? Like, you know, everybody <laughs> wants to start a fire using a ferro rod and, the, yeah. you know, the birch bark and, and yeah. whatever, fat wood and stuff like that, right? Yeah. But yeah, have you ever undertaken any big bushcraft projects, like anything that uh, stands yeah. out? Yeah, geez, time flies. So five years <laughs> ago, maybe five, six years ago, I, I did a, a camp, spent picked a bad time to do it. I did it in winter. So it was, I think I started maybe in November. I remember the snow fell pretty soon after starting, but yeah, I did a built, you know, did a fire pit and uh, like a lean to type shelter. Um, I can't remember what else I did out there, but built stuff anyway and camped out there a couple nights. Yeah. Yeah. Saw some really big tracks. I think it was a fisher out there. That kind of made me nervous. Really? Well, I was thinking that next time I'd go out, the fisher would be sleeping underneath my platform or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you never know, right? Yeah, you just built a home for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know what? It's always fun. Uh, it's a great way to pass time at a campsite, especially because yeah. you, you like the solo trip uh, quite a bit as well, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you get to the campsite and, you know, it's nice to just sit there, relax and read a book, but sometimes you just don't want to, you know, so you get up and, you know, maybe make yourself a chair or, uh, you know, whatever it might be, you know, start whittling or something along that line. So that's yeah, uh, for sure. For sure. Always, always a great little pastime. Yeah. And then now you're, you're also a, uh, you, you've built canoes, kayaks. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people are probably interested in that there because you have a video series out on that too. So what can you tell us about that? How did you get, a, how, how, how do you get started in building canoes? Uh, hmm. Like, are you a woodworker to begin with or are you I, like me? I am now. <laughs> yeah. I have a saw, but I don't know how to use it. No, yeah. no I, uh, you know, I, I, I lived in Australia and I was buying a wooden boat magazine every month inspired by so in there they've got a two-page spread of home builds and a lot of them were canoes and kayaks and i told myself that you know if i move back to canada i'm going to build myself a canoe so i moved back to canada and built myself a canoe <laughs> right and how'd that turn out for your first chance your, your first yeah, thing well, the can, we'll call you it. Know, so the first one actually turned out brilliant and uh i sold it um so i built another one 
And the only thing I can say with building canoes is it's very addictive, you know, that there's a lot to it. If, if you're creative at all, you know, if you like that process, then it's very addictive, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it takes time, but it's one of those things that, uh, you know, every few hours you can actually see it developing in a big way. So, um, you know, I think most of your viewers appreciate the canoe and just its shape itself, you know, and the beauty that it has. So, uh, when you're creating something like that, it's a unique experience because it, it's fun to do. You see it being built. And then when it's all done, you have this thing that's going to take you somewhere amazing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Huge how, many, how many have you built to date? Oh, I'm not sure. Probably around about a dozen, I would think. Really? Eh? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. you, is it more to build them and use them or build them in? Are you retail? Or, well, not retailing, but just yeah. selling them off or? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't sell them and I've considered it maybe in another five years. I'll do that. But uh, yeah, no, it's a. Uh, the, there's people that do that and they do a good job. Same as I get asked all the time if I make paddles or if I have a video on how to make paddles and there's people that do a great job at that. So I'll let them do that. You know, Hunter and Harris. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> just a little, a little plug for them. Yeah. They're, uh, they're affiliates of the channel here. So, yeah. <laughs> and you also mentioned that you built kayaks as well. Yeah, I built, well, I built a, I built one kayak. I built a, I built a canoe that can be a decked canoe, but I didn't deck it. Um, and then I built a Shearwater 17, which uh, actually uh, the company Chesapeake Light Craft, they, uh, they supplied it for me. If anybody wants to check out that boat, it's a beautiful boat. Um, but uh, yeah, this series... There's a, I did a series on how to build it and they've got the series on their website as well. So kind of to help their customers and yeah, it's nice, really nice boat. Um, hmm. Yeah. Really nice. Cool. And I can throw a question up here from the, from the chat there. Uh, Ian's asking, I, I assume that's supposed to be how many hours generally does it take you to build a canoe? You uh, keep track? Yeah. So your, your first canoe will be like 120 to 150 hours. And then after that, it goes down. So now for me, now it's probably 80 to 100. And that's just because the first canoe, you're going to be learning a lot. And it's the whole setup process. So you build it on forms and you have to make the forms and all of that. That all takes time. Just setting up your shop, you know, once you have it set up and you know what you're doing, then, you know, to get the form set up is just whatever two hours of work instead of 20 so yeah yeah when you're when you're building those things is it like when once you start on a day like does it the momentum start building because like you know you're you're maybe hand planing something the same way and they're all fitting right yeah. in or is it really finicky uh like wood is organic and so you it's finicky in that way that you have to be careful and it's cedar so it's soft so you have to be a little bit more careful um uh but uh you know T ted moores from uh bear mountain boats uh, he told me and like he's the master right so he told me that uh it's a dance and that when you have your shop set up and when you've got a bit of experience then it's just a dance and you know the steps to take and you just move and flow through it and i think that's definitely true um you know, Ted's a master dancer. I'm just learning the steps, but you know, already it's, you know, much easier for me. So, but. Well, yeah. I guess just even having uh, your, your tool accessibility, right? Like I, I know from doing right. like little home projects, right. Wife wants me to put up a curtain rod up in the, the bedroom or something. Right. So I go up there. Okay. You assess and you go, okay, I need a screwdriver. I need a hammer. I need a drill. So you go down, you get that, you get up there and go up oh, drill bits, the wrong size back down the stairs, out to the garage, get the, yeah. and it's back and forth. And before you know, it, you have this huge collection of tools <laughs> that, yeah. that, that you needed for that job. Right. So, yeah. it, but once you get into the, the knack of things and you got all your woodworking tools all handy, then that that's obviously going to make, uh, or help expedite the whole the whole process right yeah yeah for sure and and that's the thing too like if you 
you know, I know Ted and a lot of other builders, uh, they have workshops and stuff. So if, I never did a workshop to learn. I learned from books and whatever resources I could find. But uh, yeah, I would recommend someone if they were interested to take a workshop or something to learn those, you know, tricks and how to set up easy because, you know, for me, it's, yeah, learn or get an idea of how to innovate, you know, the process a little bit better. And, but every canoe, it's only just that little bit easier, right? So yeah, a access a master and see how they do it and save yourself a lot of time. Well, not only that, but you, you learn your own little tips and tricks as you're going along, right? You go, oh, I just found an easy way to do it. Now right. you can apply it to the next build, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 A couple more questions here. Brian Jay's asking, how does Jason feel about his ugly canoe? <laughs> I've, I've heard you call your canoe that on a few occasions. <laughs> yeah. I love my ugly canoe. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny because uh, so that year I built it. Uh, geez, how old were the kids? 17 or something like that. You know, they're at the age where they didn't want to do anything with their old man. So uh, it. I realized, I think in June that I needed a solo canoe. So I had some scrap wood and had to start thinking about shape and what type of canoe and uh, decided to modify a couple designs to suit me to make a good solo and yeah i used garbage wood really and just scraps so i nicknamed it the ugly canoe i did things that i would never do normally because you know usually it's well it's a big investment anyway the materials and right you know so you know you want to be careful and everything but this one i like i said i think it was june and it was like i need a canoe in two weeks so i just used what I had and whipped it together and in, in two weeks, I think it was quick. Wow. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, I love it. It's good. You know, it's a, it's a great design. So what I did was I, uh, basically I combined a prospector with a Bob special and, uh, shortened it. It's 14 and a half feet. So mm -hmm. with a canoe at 14 feet, they start to get, this is canoe design for anyone interested. Um, at 14 feet, a, the length of a canoe starts to get so short that it turns really easy. So that's would be great for whitewater. And you can see that in whitewater kayaks where they're shorter in length. So I wanted it to be over 14 feet, but a solo. So I made it 14 and a half and uh, yeah, just the Bob special is a good canoe. It tracks really nice and straight. You know, the prospector is good for uh, all purpose, right? Heavy load and good for whitewater and stuff like that. Yeah. I really like it. It's a, uh, you know, I wanted a canoe that would be good for fishing and stable enough to run a camera and hold the horizon relatively straight. You know, I've, uh, I've stood up in that boat so many times and only fallen out once. So. Right. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so do you have, do you actually have plans for that or is that something that you designed on your own? Yeah, no. So I designed it on my own, but, uh, all I have is, you know, probably on my laptop, I probably still have the offsets that I used. Um, but, uh, I have the forms that I used and I get asked all the time if I'm going to sell it or like the plans, but yeah, yeah I'm going to hold on to that one for a little while. So, well, I, I don't think your ugly canoe is that ugly to be honest with you. Cause right. I think every, every canoe is a work of art, uh, when you get into, uh, hand crafting them. So, uh, you, you mentioned that one of your, one of your first attempts. So, uh, Maybe not your first one, but like something early on there that uh, that you built wasn't uh, wasn't quite the best success story when you, yeah, when no. you finished, right? Yeah, that's right. And so nobody should, uh, if you're building your first boat, you do not want to modify a design. <laughs> right. uh, and that's what I did. And yeah, yeah, it didn't work out at all. It was very tippy. Um, like I mentioned to you before the show, it, like a, a sprint canoeer would probably do all right in it, but yeah, way too tippy for me. So it was I think fast, it, but not stable, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it became a planter. I think is what happened to that. Well, is that right? Yeah. Well, they make great bookshelves. I've seen people with them in the corners <laughs> yeah. of their rooms, half a canoe, right, with all the shelves right. on it, or yeah. their liquor collection, or something yeah. along that lines, right? Yeah. Oh, that, that's crazy. Uh, let's see here. Um, we got some people asking here. Cupcake is asking uh, about your camper build. He's say, saying it was awesome. Why have or Oh, have you had it out yet? And will you be filming? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm working on other things right now, but uh, the camper, 
I imagine will be completed at some time, but uh, yeah. What what yeah. still needs to be done to it? You uh, interior? Uh, it, really, the interior needs to be done. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I have lots of plans for it. So it's just a matter of we'll see. That's yeah. your answer. We'll see. <laughs> Everybody wants a cabin in the woods, right? Yeah. What better than a cabin in the woods that you can uh, take That's wherever right. you want to take it, right? Yeah. yeah. And actually, so, you know, what might happen is that uh, I might end up, I like building and I'm bad at rebuilding stuff. Um, so I, when I was out on the East Coast, I was looking for land as well. And I might build a, a tiny cabin out there. So, mm -hmm. well, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, another question from the the chat over here. Norma wants to know what materials do you use for your canoes? Is it usually just cedar or other materials as well? Yeah. So I use uh, I use cedar. So I was really lucky with my location that uh, there were Amish cedar mills, so I could get uh, yellow cedar from Manitoulin Island milled, and uh, then I would cut it into the strips. Um, but also Western red cedar uh, was available at another mill. Um, so yeah, I had no problem with getting materials for that, but I've seen people use other woods. Cedar is the wood really that you should be using. Uh, it's just a matter of cedar has natural rot resistant properties. And so yeah. it's a canoe, it's going to get a hole or a crack or something. And, you know, or you'll miss a little spot in the weave of the fiberglass and there'll be just a tiny little pinhole that you didn't notice and you know, something, yeah. but you know, you want to, you want to use cedar. Not only that, it's, it's a little bit lighter than a lot, a, yeah, lot, right. a lot lighter than a lot of hardwoods. Right. So, For sure. yeah. 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 Do you, and you've got, I know in your, in your ugly, do you have a name for your ugly canoe besides ugly? Canoe? <laughs> no, it's just ugly. That's it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, we'll talk about ugly there. You have, you have different, different lines. That's just ty different types of cedar that are into it. Yeah. Uh, so there are a couple dark strips and they were, like I said, it was scrap. So that was left over from the, the Shearwater kayak that I built. Um, I think, yeah, those were walnut and I think there's two really light strips and that would be basswood. So basswood's often used in as a highlight strip for mm -hmm. canoes and kayaks, but yeah. Right. Now, you know what? Uh, I think, uh, I think your canoes are awesome <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> from what it. I've seen anyways. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, like uh, down in the de description of the video here, we've got uh, a bunch of links to Jason's, uh, his, I've got his website. I've got his uh, YouTube channels. I've got Facebook and Instagram. But uh, if if you go to his YouTube channel, obviously he's got his um, his uh, uh, playlists, right? But if you go to his website, he's got pretty much all his videos on there as well, and he's got them all categorized. So by by his uh, uh, menu at the top there, you've got everything from like knots, canoe build, uh, Algonquin. You, you've got a whole bunch of different things on there. That's probably one of the better ways because you could actually follow his series. Uh, you've got a whole section on your canoe builds there. Yeah. So. Now I'm going to have to update that. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry to make you have to work here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? If, if it's not there, people don't know it's not supposed to not like it's missing. Right. So yeah. don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Just let it sit. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Weltmeister saying very humble and very knowledgeable. What's your best design and what are your favorite seats? Mm -hmm. Nylon web cane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, like, that's one of the things I said about, uh, like I, I've never built a canoe seat. I've bought mine. Um, and mostly just because of the amount of time it takes to build a seat. I like cane seats, uh, but it's just the aesthetics of it. So I buy cane seats and like, I can't remember like the seats I buy, I think they're like 45 bucks or maybe 60 bucks or something like that. You know, like, that would take me a day to build. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, some, some things are better off just, uh, yeah. left to, uh, the local canoe place. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And actually the one company that, uh, that I buy from, they, it's a good company. They're can't remember the name off the top of my head, but they're in the States and they, uh, a lot of their workers are handicapped people. They specifically employ them. They mm -hmm. would be otherwise, not unemployable, but you know, hard to employ. And so 
yeah, I don't, if it's a good cause, give them my money and sure decent seats. So, yeah. wow, you know what? That That's interesting because if you, if you do find that information, send it over to me there and I'll, I'll get mm-hmm. a post it on my Facebook page or I'll get it in the description of the video here because. <laughs> Sometimes people are looking for that, right? If any anybody in uh, the chat happen to be building a canoe right now, uh, be interested in something like that, just put a number one in there and that'll uh, give us an indication. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, just going to get set here. I want to uh, post the invite into the chat so that if anybody has a question that they'd like to uh, come on up and ask Jason here uh, just before or after the swag giveaway, by all means, please join us. I'm going to type that in. Uh, Join us. How's that? Is that, is that, is that clear cut enough? There we go. It's coming at you people. But yeah. Um, so we'll talk a bit about the, uh, the trailer build that you're doing. What, what inspired you to build that? That thing, that thing is very unique. Hmm. That's a, we'll, we'll say it that way. Yeah. What inspired me to build that? I don't know yeah. what inspired me to build that. I think uh, what inspired me was, you know, the idea of having land and a spot where I can go and, you know, if the weather is really crappy, something that I can hide in. Um, and I looked at actually, you know, I think what it might have been is, a, you know, I built that Shearwater kayak uh, from Chesapeake and uh, they have a very cool tier, yeah, teardrop trailer i don't know if anyone's seen it uh very cool uh stitching glue uh plywood uh teardrop and i was considering that um it's so cool that i still think about it that you know that i would love to have one but i'm the creative type and i just wanted to try to do something without plans and design and yeah it was it was good it was a good challenge i built that thing just you know, from my mind, basically, I didn't have a design or anything to go off of. And so, right. yeah, no, it was just needed a project and came up with one. But it's pretty cool in a respect that like right, right now, tier, I don't know if anybody knows this, but teardrop trailers are are a pretty big thing right now. Uh, mm-hmm. There's like whole, not, I won't say communities like, like a community, but there, there's like, just like our canoeing community, there's, there's, teardrop trailer communities right and a lot of these guys are are building these these things themselves um right. you know whether it's from a, a pattern that they get from another place or just by their mind um and yeah that's pretty cool that you you've ba- essentially built yourself a tiny teardrop trailer that's well yeah. a modified version of it right yeah. yeah yeah and you can get uh so with that thing one thing i'd like to do is you can get little like wood stoves for inside of them, tiny mm-hmm. little boxes. So I thought throw one of those in there and a yeah. bed platform. Because That's cool. Have, have you, have you stayed in it yet? Have you done anything with it yet? Uh, no, but what was really cool is uh, when would it have been like just two months ago, you know, I went and checked it out and everything and it's all cedar you know, opened it up and like no bugs inside of it at all. No spiders or anything. I thought, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like sleep, it would be like sleeping in a large version of grandma's old cedar chest, right? Right. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that beautiful cedar smell. Oh man. Yeah. I, I almost remember a cottage that I almost bought one time, one of those cedar cannabis uh, places. And mm. the place was probably like 25 years old and it still smelled probably as good as it did the day it was built. Yeah, you know what I mean. That that cedar just, just oh, such a nice smell, such a nice That's smell. True. Uh, Cupcake Ad- Adventure Chick wants to know what place is having you trip yet that you'd like to. Hmm. What's on the bucket list for Jason? The well, bucket list, big one. Uh, Thelon, I'd like to get up to do the Thelon one day if I can. Uh, very expensive trip, but that's a bucket list trip for me for sure. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, if I'm going to do that, hopefully it'll be in the next few years. So that's a place, uh, Northwest Territories, you go up there and you see Arctic fox and muskox and, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, that that would be the, a lot of people talk about Nahanni, but, uh, yeah, the Thelon would be it for me. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's places overseas that I'd like to go to, places in Australia. and Yeah. yeah. 
That's all right. That's all right. Now, do you uh, do you have preferences when you're tripping? Like, do you prefer solo, or do you enjoy having a a, a companion with you? Or uh, no, I don't prefer solo. I go solo because. Uh, well, I'm introverted and it's difficult to find people I can tolerate for six days alone with them. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, especially, you know, like at my age, um, you know, it's definitely not about the pushing hard to do difficult things on a trip. It's about the people that I spend time with around the campfire. When I think about what I do, six, maybe eight trips, this year uh the best trip was when i spent with uh, uh derek jeff and noah you know just the time around the fire and you know the experiences of you know fishing and even you know the miserable of rain or whatever you know that's just yeah, yeah so much better when you have people to enjoy it with yeah Let's, let's talk about some of the favorites. Uh, you know, everybody has a favorite that sticks in their mind that, uh, you know, makes them reminisce about a, a trip. Fa fa favorite favorite canoe trip? Oh, my favorite canoe trip uh, would probably be, like, my favorite memory, which really is the memory of a canoe trip that, uh, you know, got me addicted would be my first canoe trip and it was with my older brother and my dad when I was young I was like seven or eight years old and right. we uh we spent a few days uh, in Samuel de Champlain Provincial Park and then we went into uh, uh we followed the river down into the north end of Algonquin um yeah, the, the memory is that, you know, we spent the day out in the canoe and uh, I don't know why my older brother got ditched at camp. But anyway, <laughs> dad and I went back out in the canoe in the evening. Uh, I think we just went to paddle around. I don't remember fishing, but here I am at the front of the boat and this muskie jumped like 10 feet in front of me. And like, you know, a little kid and this thing was massive. It was the same size as me, you know, it was, wow. like it might as well been a dolphin. So, yeah. So after that, I was hooked. That's funny. You say it that way. He's like the size of me, right? Well, you're seven years old. I remember when I was seven years old and the snow was up to here on me, right? right. So I tell people, yeah, man, back when I was a kid, he used to be up to here. Well, wait a minute. It was like up to here, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, favorite sunset. Where, uh, where, where were you? Favorite sunset. Uh, you say Daisy Lake, aren't you? No, Wabakimi. Uh, Wabakimi. Yeah. Which lake was it? Mm -hmm. It might have been Granite Lake on Wabakimi, but I don't think it was. I'd have to look at a map and remind myself. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a uh, it. I've got a photo of it. I wish I could share it right now. If we were talking about it, I would have sent it to you, but it was, uh, it was one of these sunsets that I have a photo. So I have a photo of me taking a photo and someone, yeah. So I was taking the photo of the sunset and someone was taking a photo of me, taking a photo of the sunset. Okay. And so the photo I took, the colors are, it's just stunning. It's like, it looks, it's undescribable. And uh, it's one of those sunsets where you think, oh, yeah, it's photoshopped, but it wasn't. It's just exactly how it was. And the proof that it was so beautiful is that there's this photo from behind me that someone else took and all the color and everything is the same. But, yeah, it was just, yeah, it, like I, I can't even describe how it, it, it was one of those moments, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah every, everybody's had one of those, right? Uh, I, I, I've got one on my phone. I could. If I turn my phone on right now, I can show you a nice tomogamy sunset. I was up there. My dad and I went camping and uh, we had one of them nights where, you know, we we're just being a father and son and sort of drinking a few too many. Mm -hmm. And just so happened to be the most spectacular sunset I've ever seen in my life. You know, crimson red skies uh, is like just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that, that nine 11 thing. Everybody knows where they were when, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, favorite, favorite trip all around that you've ever done. Hmm. Favorite trip. Oh, that's a tough one. 
You know, well, that's a really tough one. You know, everybody like, trips over that one, Jason. Everyone does. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you know, it. They, like there's so much with every trip, you know, like good and bad, right? Uh -huh. And uh, so it's hard to measure them. Uh, the, you know, this last trip that I did with the uh, that I mentioned from the summer with uh, Derek, Jeff, and Noah, that was a uh, that was one of the best trips in recent times anyway so it was you know it wasn't perfect weather it was like a perfect day then a rainy day perfect day rainy day but it, that area through uh, uh like magnetowan and naganosh area it's a uh, yeah it's stunning landscape the fishing is good you know the landscape i really like it where it's you know you've got the you know the the rocks and the trees and you know there's like river and lake and like everything, everything mm -hmm. that you want, you know, it's a little bit paddle another 15 minutes and it offers something else for you. So that was really good. And, and the companionship as well was great. So that was, yeah, yeah. good, good, good group of guys. I really enjoyed being out with them. That, al that always makes a difference. Hey, eh? uh, if that, I think that's why so many people always bring the same canoe partners all the time, because mm -hmm. like you said earlier, you're a bit of an introvert and you have to find somebody that you could handle for six days right, right. or seven days or whatever. It, it makes a big difference because you don't want to go on a trip where you're not quite sure of a person, uh, you know, but you never know until you do try it too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then you don't talk again for a year or two afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, everybody finds comfort in having their their regular canoe partners, right? Uh, I know I've got my buddy there that I've been canoeing with for well over 30 years now. Uh, well, I shouldn't say well over, close to 30 years. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, and why? Because we both know what we need to do. We both have that common interest. And I don't think there's ever been in all those years of, of tripping, sometimes two, three times a year, you know, where we've ever had a bicker, like, or been bickering with each other over anything. Right. It's just, you know what you got to do. You know, when he's paddling, I know how he's paddling. When I'm paddling, he knows how I'm paddling. And it, yeah. it just makes that big difference. Yeah. 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 So you, is it the same for you? You've got the same paddling buddies that you've been using for, or not using, but uh, paddling with for many years. Yeah. Well, and I would say, uh, yeah, those three guys. So Jeff and I have only been out a couple times now together, two times, I think. Yeah, maybe three times. But uh, Derek and I have been tripping for a few years now. Uh, Noah, my son, Noah, is uh, it, it, anyone who's a father, you know, or mother who has grown up with their kid, you know, and watching them develop. Mm -hmm. I, I wish he was in interested in tripping as much as I am, but he uh, he puts up with me for a trip a year and it, and it, you know it's not just that he's uh, my son but that's been really good you know because he's uh, really learned how to control the canoe and yeah. you know so he's a uh, yeah he's good to canoe with and so yeah yeah geez that's cool okay you know what we're uh, just after eight o'clock i'm gonna i'm gonna get the uh, swag giveaway uh <laughs> taken care of uh, i just posted the link once again if anybody wants to pop up on screen uh, did you need to get yourself a new beverage or I'm good men's room or anything like that? You're good. Yeah, I'm all right. Okay. We'll keep you on, on screen here. Okay, guys and gals, I'm just going to do uh, the swag giveaway quickly here and then we'll uh, get back into talking with Jason. Uh, essentially I'm going to first, just like usual, I'm going to put the ticker across the bottom. So when I do ask the question, please do not put the answer in the, uh, the chat over there please send me an email to coasprize at gmail.com. That's going across the bottom, so uh, write it down. Uh, as usual, our questions are never difficult, and we always mention the answers to it uh, many, many times throughout the, uh, the live stream. So uh, before I get on with the question, I'm just going to tell you what the prizes are. First off, we're going to have a Canoe Hound Adventures prize pack, which is going to consist of some uh, decals, uh, some iron-on patches, and what else was there? Uh, yeah, that there. And then we got some stuff from Algonquin Outfitters being a uh, $25 uh, gift certificate, as well as a free day rental of any item that uh, Algonquin Outfitters offers for rent. Um, awesome. If you're going up to Algonquin or any of the areas where they rent, including their ski facilities and blah, blah, blah. Right. And uh, thanks to the uh, generosity of one of our viewers this week, he actually purchased the uh, three sets of these Kevin Callan decals, uh, the commemorative ones. 
going to be throwing one of them in there as well. Thank you to that person. You know who you are because I see you're in the live chat tonight. So thanks once again for your support and for uh, allowing us to send something out and for supporting Project Canoe. That's awesome. And for anybody that does want to buy these, they are $10 each. I'll get the link going across the bottom of the screen in a few minutes after the swag giveaway in case you want to pick up some and support uh, Project Canoe. Only 10 bucks. Anyways, tonight's question is, let me find that here on the screen. There we go. How many days was Jason's most recent Algonquin Park solo canoe trip on YouTube? Okay, he's got a series out right now. He's on episode four. If you miss the answer here, go to Jason's uh, YouTube channel. You can watch the whole video series up to part four right now. And uh, the answer is right there for you. So I'll leave this on screen for a few minutes. How many days was Jason's most recent Algonquin Park solo canoe trip on YouTube? Whoa, that's a tongue twister in itself. <laughs> so do you know how many days it was, Jason? More than four. More than four, yes. Yeah, and a lot less than, well, not a lot less than <laughs> seven, right? But <laughs> awesome. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, where were we there? We were talking, we covered your uh, your your camper. The one thing I wanted to find out about the camper, did you build a frame on that too, or was that an existing trailer already? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I found that on Kijiji. It was an existing trailer. I had to tear off all the old crappy wood and oh, yeah. grind off stuff and repaint it and whatever, but yeah. That's cool. So yeah, like I say, you haven't used it yet, so you, you haven't, you, you're still working on it. Uh, yeah. You just got it stored at home type of deal, or yeah. you got that in storage, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's in storage. Okay, yeah. that's cool. That, that thing is cool. I like I like the shape of it and stuff like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, if you, not if you, your your not videos that you have on your uh, your not channel are were you a Boy Scout? Uh, is this something, or is this uh, you just have the not book and you start practicing knots? Where yeah. where does that all come from? Yeah, so I I was in the scouting program, um, but no, it's I just yeah, like knots. I don't know. Knots interest me. Uh, not, not a lot, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, they interest me. You know, it like I, I did learn some in scouts and then, uh, you know, just like a lot of us, you know, grew up around the water and, you know, see my grandpa tie a knot and he shows me how, and, you know, you learn a few. And so it just, uh, went from there and yeah, they, they're interesting. Uh, it's a, I don't want to be too boring or anything or too nerdy, but uh, it's like not, knots and knotting is the oldest form of folk art. So it's been around for, you know, forever since we could pull our hair out and create, you know, string that we can create decorative stuff out of knots. It's been done. So just kind yeah. of to learn and, you know, useful. Really, you only need like five of them to get by, but. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like uh, most people know, there there are five knots, right? Yeah. Uh, for for bushcraft or or for doing what we do, canoe camping or backcountry camping. But there there's so many uh, different knots out there. Like I, I enjoy it because to me it's a uh, it's like that puzzle on Aunt, Aunt Edna's coffee table. You know the the little puzzles that just sit there and make you think, right? Yeah. Because sometimes it's amazing how coordinated you think your think your fingers are, but they're actually not, right? No yep. pun intended. They're not, uh, but you know, so when you when you actually when you're practicing these things, you're you're learning new coordination and and you're freshening the the memory skills too, right? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. if you tie the knot today, there's no guarantee you're going to remember it tomorrow. No, no, and it is you know like if, to go from like you don't have to be an advanced knotter or anything, but to go from knowing one or two and you know, if you learn a few here and there, then it does help out when you're bushcrafting or camping or whatever, because mm -hmm. yeah, in, in the end, whatever, you're not going to slip on you and you're going to be thinking, you know, how the hell do I get this yeah. bear bag to hang up there or whatever, you know? And yeah. Well, what, what, okay. So let, let's tell everybody what, are, what are your five go-to knots for, for camping? Uh, well, like a, a, the Bolin, definitely Bolin knot. That's number one in everybody's book, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fixed loop, right? So it's not going to slip. Um, yeah. uh, round turn two half hitches would be another one. Uh, tot line, tot line or midshipman's hitch. So uh, for those who know, mm -hmm. they know yeah. <laughs> for yeah. the initiated. Yeah. Um, 
So what's that? Bullen round turn two half hitches, either the midshipmen's or tot line or yeah. Um, trucker's hitch. Yeah. Trucker's hitch. Yeah. 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 The jam yeah. knot. Yeah. yeah knots probably, I too. I'd probably throw in like a sheep bend or yeah. have to throw in some kind of bend. So yeah. Sheep bend or Zeppelin bend hunters bend one of those. Yeah. So, so, okay. Everybody's maybe everybody's fiber are a little different because mine are a little different, but yeah. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. No, you know what? It's, it's pretty cool. And, uh, the way he, he teaches you on his, uh, his not channel, check it out because he makes learning easy. Makes it, it make, <laughs> you, you weren't a teacher, were you by any chance or uh, no, but no. so I, I was a martial artist in a past life and yeah. taught martial arts for 20 or 30 years. So, oh, wow. Yeah, cool. so I think that comes into the, like the, the building videos just, and the knots and stuff like that is just, a have a little bit of experience. And wax on, wax on, exactly. wax on, yeah. wax on. <laughs> exactly. So note to self, everybody, if you yeah. see Jason on a portage, do not sneak, yeah. sneak up behind him quietly. Okay. Chances yeah. are you're going to take a roundhouse to the head. So. I'm easy to sneak up on these days. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you'll sneak up on you. You'll turn around, get one of those karate chops. Like, What'd you do that for? <laughs> Uh, that's funny that's good stuff uh kc happy camper saying can you let everyone know about that old cool film project you did canoe icon the north yeah kevin nice to see you you uh, know kevin, you wrote in my book a uh, happy camper you wrote uh something along the lines of uh, uh looking forward to seeing you out on the portage one day and we still haven't seen each other on a portage one day so you know, we need to go camping, Kevin. Um, yeah, no, I did this, uh, you know, and this is a thing. So, geez, how many years ago is that? Like six years ago, I think. That's when I, I mentioned earlier tonight that I had done a canoe build. I videoed it. And then, uh, you know, it was years later. And I realized that people were watching my videos. And I thought, I've got to do something for you know, all these people who are actually watching, I can't remember. And it, the numbers are not even that impressive these days, but I was getting like 10 or 15,000 views a month or something on the canoe building videos. So anyway, I looked at the books on my bookshelf and thought, you know, I'd like to go and interview some of these people that have inspired me. And uh, yeah, so I reached out to like everybody, you know, I reached out to Kevin and to, to Becky, uh, Becky Mason, um, uh, Ted Moores, uh, Bear Mountain Boats. Uh, geez, I don't want to forget anybody. Um, uh, Hugh Stewart, who uh, runs Headwaters Canoes, uh, builds really nice uh, cedar canvas boats. Um, reached out to the Canadian, our Olympians, uh, Adam Van Coverden and... Uh, Mark Aldershaw and others. And I went out and I interviewed everybody. I had a nice, you know, small group of people. Uh, uh, what two of them were uh, either just getting out of college or university for film or broadcast, that type of discipline. And yeah, we traveled around and interviewed everybody. And, you know, it was an incredible, incredible experience. Um, you know, like I, you know, I, like I was a paddler and I had built, I think at that time, two canoes and, you know, my arrogance, I thought I knew something <laughs> and went out to talk to the people who inspired me and uh, they all let me into, you know, their, their place, their space and chatted with them, asked them, oh, like 20 or 30 questions and created this uh, documentary, Canoe Icon of the North. Um, it, it was an incredible, incredible experience. Um, you know, and something else, Kevin, what's neat, I'll share with you because, so the, one of the guys, Corey, who was on the crew with me, uh, he had never been on a canoe trip. Most of them had never been on a canoe trip. And I said, at the end of this, we're going to go out and we're going to go spend a few days, you know. We're going to go canoe around so you can experience this. Um, that whole experience inspired Corey. It was like three years later, and I was on uh, Ralph Bice Lake. 
miserable weather and I hear my name called out and it's Corey paddling by. And he said that, you know, like he goes out every year now with his, you know, his girlfriend or wife and they were out with, I think her dad or something like that. And, and he told me that the, the you know, that whole experience, like, you know, inspired him to just keep getting out. And yeah, I, I, I you know, it's not just that I did it. I, I highly recommend that video that I, it's one of those things that I wish the end product would be better than it is. Uh, but for what it was and the, you know, the budget I was working on and the, you know, just the, the free resources of everybody's volunteering and time and whatever, I think it turned out pretty good. And I think uh, what people can gain from it, you know, like these are the people, you know, like Kevin and the people that I've mentioned that, you know, they have so much experience and to have them all in one video, you know, it's like, you know, if I could go to college and learn, you know, what is important about the canoe and, you know, how, you know, how to get started and advice from these people, like it's all in one spot. So yeah, no, I'm, yeah. Thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate it. We'll always appreciate uh, your help with that. And, uh, you know, another thing that I'll say to you, Kevin, is that so many times I've been out and, uh, you know, in the wilderness and the, some of the things that you told me while interviewing you or just in our candid conversation, uh, I remember and I just think, you know, it rings true. You know, Kevin Cowlin said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 say, I say that all too often. <laughs> all yeah. too often. No, you know what? It's amazing how, uh, how there are so many influencers when it comes to Canadian canoeing and so many of these influencers are right from here in Ontario. You know what right. I mean? We have such a, such a good hub of uh, knowledge and wealth and information and stuff like that. And uh, it, it's really cool. And especially the fact that these people who have, who have uh, taken on sort of that fame of, of yeah. being that person, right. That they're, they're still so approachable and uh, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll talk to the guys like yourself and myself. Right. And uh it, it's not a problem and, and they like to share the the knowledge and it it, com it comes with a love for what they actually do right. is they actually want to share this so it continues on so other you know you'll share it like you're doing you're sharing it with other people right whether right. it's through youtube or or through that particular film right so yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool uh, i see somebody just popped into the basement uh let's uh bring them on up to say hello this is uh Brian Jay, how you doing tonight, Brian? That's pretty cool. Got you there. There I am. Hey, there you are. <laughs> how you doing tonight? Not too badly, not too badly. We got uh, quite a bit of snow here just south of Edmonton. Yeah. And it's 30 this week, so. Wow, wow. Yeah, you get out there in that hammock pretty soon, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you just a question for Jason? I do. I just want to say uh, that the... Uh, keychain videos from way back when hmm. i made a bunch of those for my kids and I, I still i still use mine that's a the paracord ones hey that's awesome yeah i, <laughs> I made a bunch of them for my kids and stuff and um use them for work vehicles and stuff but yeah it's it was just a fun little project to kill the time and yeah. um appreciate you putting that sort of stuff up there i mean the canoe builds are awesome too cool but uh, nice. i really like watching the uh your ugly canoe because like i said that's making use of the that sort of uh, bits and pieces that you had left over. That's, that's phenomenal stuff. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. That the, the keychain. it's a, uh, yeah, it's, you're right. It's, and I think that's another thing with just the knots and in yeah. general, you know, we think about things like you mentioned that I learned from scouts and, you know, it, like it's one of those things that, especially if you have a young group that you can show them how to do something and maybe not a keychain, but you know, mm -hmm some basic knot and this is how you you know if you tie this is how you tie the bowline and show them that it's you know it's not going to slip on you and you know yeah. the uses or whatever it's good well some of the guys used to uh, do the hammock camping with and that like you know a lot of them have like they're just proficient you know beyond belief they're you know it's like you know can you saying you you know you forget after a while but i mean same thing i know somebody in the chat mentioned you know they keep a piece of paracord nearby or one guy keeps it in his pocket 
and you know he's got some extra time he's just you know it's just a philly thing for him so uh yeah it's 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 just something to you know pass the time sometimes but it's also a little uh mental clarity sometimes yeah yeah but, for sure yeah cool yeah, so yeah I appreciate, appreciate your content thanks very much no thank hey, you thank thanks you. for coming nice up right i uh, haven't seen you up here in a while so that's uh good to see your face <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Take we care. miss you down here in warm uh, southern Ontario. Oh, I know so. the, the the balmy south. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, hey, we're supposed to get rain tomorrow. I'd like to see the white stuff myself. Mm -hmm. So, all good. Thanks, Brian. Have a great yeah. night. Take care. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, you know, uh, Jason. The the impact, even as as small, like, well, I keep saying smaller YouTubers because you're you're like your your channel's five times the size of mine, but uh, you know. It, the influence that you and I and other YouTubers have on, on people as far as, uh, you know, passing on skills like that. Yeah. Uh, a couple of my biggest videos on my channel are actually my how to videos that are quite, uh, amateurishly done. Right. And yet they, they continue to take a lot of traffic because people are looking for this stuff to learn from. So yeah. it's a, it's a great contribution to the whole community. Yeah. 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 You know, it is. And, uh, you know, I don't, really think about that side of things you know i like i said i do it for myself but but it is neat it's it, it's neat you know and like i said the canoe icon of the north what inspired me to do that was that i was getting you know comments and emails from people thanking me and and i thought you know all those videos were they're so crappy you know mm. and i'm getting thanked i really need to do something better for these people that you know like this stuff so yeah yeah. How, so. how long ago did that video come out? Because I, I haven't seen it. I'd really like to watch that. Yeah, like I think it was, uh, geez, like it's got to have been five years ago, maybe okay. six years ago. Yeah. And it is called, what's the name of it? Yeah, Canoe Icon of the North. Canoe Icon of the North. There you go, people. Write that down and uh, give it a little visit after. Uh, like yeah. I say, all of Jason's links are in the description below. So if you, uh, if you want to go check that out, uh, by all means, go check it out and check out all his knots. And he's got so many cool videos on there. Uh, and what I what I like about your videos is they're they're just calm and serene. You know, it's not all high impact action. Uh, it's not a it's not a sci fi movie or anything like that, right? It's uh, very well shot, very well edited. Um, yeah, I, I give you kudos to your uh, your editing style. Yeah, well, yeah. thanks. I know, like my videos are probably not for everyone. They're slower pace, like you said. But uh, for me, it's just to remember what the, you know, I want to try to document what the route is like, so that that I can share that. If I look up anything from someone else, that's what I want to see. Is like, what am I getting myself into? You know, what's out there? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and aside from that, I want to just remember. You know, when I, you know. If I get to, you know, and it'll happen to all of us, if I get to the stage where I can't get out again and I want to remember what it was like to be out in Wabakimi or, you know, on Daisy Lake or whatever, I want to be able to sit for 10 minutes and, you know, see the water ripple or the loons calling or the sun setting. So, yeah. 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 I see Brian J just uh, finished posting the link there. So if you're, if you, Click on that there and save it for a watch. Maybe after uh, the show tonight, uh, that'll give you something to do while uh, you're trying to kill off the rest of your Tuesday evening, right? Well, that's all good. Um, so have you had any trips that you've done that you've actually documented twice? Hmm. I know I've done Naganosh twice and it's so, it was so difficult to try and come up with footage the second yeah. time around, right? Yeah. Like the, well, hmm. You know, like I've been to Daisy Lake a few times, so I've been on that lake. But uh, I don't mind so much documenting the same spot twice because there's always going to be something a little bit different, um, mm -hmm. you know, or just the experience, uh, you know, especially when we're doing this, you know, first person kind of vlogging type style that, you know, whatever is going on in my mind on the day, you know, uh, but uh I don't know if I've really done the same route more than once. So there's definitely been lakes. So on this, uh, like this, the six day trip that we've been talking about, uh, you know, I've been on Ralph Bice before I've been on Daisy Lake before, but I never joined them with the Petawawa river. So, you know, I definitely okay. filmed Ralph Bice and well, Magneto on Hambone, Ralph Bice, Daisy, you know, they've all been filmed before, but those lakes and the Petawawa in between never. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Kevin Callan wants to know about your canoe hat. It's a really cool, cool canoe hat. Yeah. So that, uh, that hat is, uh, I got that when I lived in Australia and I've had it for, uh, 25 years. It's an Akubra. Um, I, they still make that style. It's a stockman, but, uh, they've changed it a little bit. Uh, it's a, a Kubra was found in Australia. It's a rabbit felt hat to deal with the rabbits that were infesting Australia. So really, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I've had that for a long time. I have let my dog drink out of that hat. I've, you know, done everything with that hat and still rabbit have. felt hatty. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's a trivia question right there in itself. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's getting close to retirement. It's got a hole in it. So I asked the kids the other day, should I keep wearing it? And they they were pretty adamant that that hat is a part of me and that I need to start keep wearing it. So I was going to say, if you weren't wearing that hat on a trip, if you were wearing like a baseball cap or something, it, it wouldn't look look like a, a Jason uh, Eek yeah. video. You, people would be saying, who's this guy? I, yeah. I tuned in for, <laughs> for Jason, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, you know, it's, it's like uh, you, you got your own little persona going with your own little hat there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. It's good stuff. Anyways, uh, you know what? I think we pretty much uh, covered all the bases tonight. Um, oh. You know, it's, it's been very interesting. I Like I say, I keep the videos coming because I really do enjoy uh, the channel itself. And uh, just like everybody else, I've done a lot of the same routes you've done. Uh, mind you, you know what? Funny thing, I've never been on Daisy Lake. Uh, I got some buddies that swear by it. They even have a dish that they named after after it called the Daisy Lake Special, yeah. right? And it's this mishmash of food out of all the things they had left over in their barrel. But uh, someplace I, I'd like to check out. You never know. Maybe one day we'll be able to dip a paddle together and, uh, you know, share a beer together or something. Well, you could have your own beer. I could have my own beer, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never know. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. So uh, one last thing. You mentioned, uh, do, you, do you have any trips lined up or, or things that you want to do specifically into the new year, like uh, next spring, summer, fall? Yeah, I've got, so uh, we've had a spring trip planned the last three years and it's been canceled. Uh, Thank you. Well, this will be the third year. So yeah, it's been canceled because of COVID. So I do have a, a trip that, uh, like I'm already nervous, it's booked. So it is booked already, but yeah, I'm nervous that it'll be canceled again but yeah spring trout trip 10 days um so that'll be good and uh yeah i've got a trip i think planned uh i've got a trip planned for may then i'm going i'm leaving canada in june and then i'm going to be back and then i've got a trip planned for july august september and october so wow i can fit in yeah Wow, I I, uh, I don't know if I've ever planned a trip that far in advance. <laughs> Us guys uh, usually will uh, will be like a last second uh, type of thing. Oh, somebody else popped into the basement. Should we bring another person up for a quick one? Might as well. Okay, this one here, uh, this one usually carries a special introduction though, so bear with me for a moment. Hi, I'm Kevin Collin, the Happy Camper. Woo! Yes, I'm Apostle number fourteen. Well, if you visited me instead, you would have been fine. It's a one sexy beast, I'm telling you. You know, I told you poopy pants, sorry about that. Did you really? <laughs> I will hold in my urine for you, Dennis. You have to remind Kevin that this is a family show. What about the chipmunks? Awesome. Mr. Callan, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> hey, Jason. <laughs> Jason. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I wanted to come on uh, uh, earlier or whatever. I, I just having a busy day um, with uh, actually some family stuff. So um yeah uh stupid covid um All right. first, off, first off kevin beautiful tree in the background there look at that eh? Uh, yeah i haven't put decorations on yet just lights but yeah uh, well still still shines brightly yeah that's the only way i can light this place up it's terrible <laughs> um yeah uh, uh, poor christine because covid is uh uh shut down kingston um, yeah, so yeah, that's to, right. I've seen that on the news today. Yeah, yeah, so we're supposed to do the family Cal and Christmas thing uh, on uh, on Saturday, and it, she can't go with like. Well, there's 25 Callens getting getting together, and the, they're they can't do over five. So, and, oh my god! So I'm dealing with all that stuff right now tonight. So sorry, Jason, but I'm, yeah. I was watching your show during it, and love the hat and love the whole uh, icon of the North. 
but I'd like to tell everybody out, out there, um, you're actually, uh, you've always done this too, uh, ever, ever since I've known you. you. You do incredible work, but you so, sort of like, sort of like, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, I tell you, like, um, but I, I, you don't know this story. I don't think I've ever told you this, but when you were doing the Icon of the North uh, project, and I, I really didn't know you either. Like you kind of told me what it was all about. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And Becky contacted me and that's kind of cool. And, and uh, all those other people that you, you contacted. Um, but there was some canoe uh, elitists out there that actually contacted me too and said, who is this Jason guy? I went, I don't know, but what's wrong with what he's doing? Like he's going around on a minimal budget, probably even paying out of his own pocket uh, to create something that's really kind of cool. So I don't care. And you did it, man. I hats off of you yeah. because I'm telling you, you, you did that project and all those other people that actually, uh, you don't know this, but they kind of like, who's, who's, you know, who's this guy? They didn't get on your show. The right. hell with them. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. I appreciate that, Kevin. You're right. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I knew, I knew some of the, you know, the talk that was going on behind, you know, between other people and groups or whatever, but, yeah, I didn't really care, you know, but uh, I'd st I still, I, I, I want to do it again. <laughs> I think you should because it's almost like a second round. It's like yeah. going to the ring again, right? Yeah. Uh, because, you, you know, you've proven yourself in editing and filming and stuff like that and you polish yourself. Well, actually, you were pretty polished when you were filming that show, I should be quite honest. I, I, uh, I, you say that you, were, you need to be polished, but you were pretty polished when you were doing that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think it was really cool that you did that because the concept of what you had in your mind was to go and promote paddling to, to get people out there. Mm -hmm. And the people that were knocking you, like, there wasn't a lot of people, but there were some individuals we, we've dealt with all our lives, right? And, right? and everything we deal with all of our lives, there's always those negative people like, well, who is he? I was like, well, who is he? He's a guy that's doing a project on his own. And I don't know, like, Jesus, like, mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. I'm blabbing. Uh, I, I, I'm not blabbing. I we, we, we've it, discussed Kevin. stuff like that before, and uh, you're so right. You know, like uh, everybody has the right to do what they want to do, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know, I wouldn't have gone if you were a dull blader. Like, really, like, don't. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just yeah. Joking. Yeah. I, no, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Do you have do you have a double blade? <laughs> yeah, are, are you are you in tune with the uh, controversy going on on this show on a weekly basis? I, I, I don't use it, and I remember Kevin telling me that people uh, people who use it. Can I say it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it because he says it all the time. <laughs> people who use a a double blade remind him <laughs> of uh, a it was like a dog with worms dragging its ass on the ground or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kevin, but. Yeah. But that's that's okay. Like, I've never yeah, heard it that problem. way. I always, I always I, heard people, even in the people kayak, double blades and people don't know how to pass. Yeah. That's what's in my brain. <laughs> it's true. It's true. See the negative influence you're having on people, Kevin? I know. I, I, I'm so honored that uh, uh, Jason uh, interviewed me and, and everybody else uh, because, you know, I remind everybody about dogs wiping their butts <laughs> across the shag carpet because of worms and yeah. they're, therefore they're <laughs> double bladers. <laughs> Oh Lord! <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, Dennis. You had a bad show. show. <laughs> it's terrible. Wow. All right. Well, I, I'm going. I'm. Uh, good luck with everybody, and uh, God blesses everyone. <laughs> yeah. Happy good, good luck. Good luck with the crisis, there, right. Kevin. Good luck with the crisis. Yeah. Welcome to the holidays. It's more family politics than actually a happy holiday. Yeah. 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 Stupid yeah. COVID. Yeah. Take you care. Know what? Of have her move in with you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Way to go, uh, Jason. You do, you do amazing work, uh, amazing videos, and great inspiration, great enthusiasm. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Okay. See you in the green room, maybe. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have Mr. Callan on screen yeah. with us. Eh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So anyways, uh, I'm going to definitely have to check out this video. Like I say, Brian J posted the link and uh, we will uh, definitely be taking that in, or at least I will. So that that's all good. And just like Kevin said too, you know what, keep up the great work because uh, I really enjoy your videos and uh, 
I just wish they'd send me notifications more often. I got the little bell rung and everything, and I always have to go looking once in a while for, for certain people's videos, right? So damn algorithms, right? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Man, you know what? You you probably have the best perspective of, of, of YouTube. Eh? It's like you don't care if people watch your videos, but you're glad they do, right? So no, that's right. Like it it's yeah, it is one of those things. You know, I'll continue to make them and uh I appreciate when people do watch them. Uh but yeah, it's uh yeah, I'm enjoying the journey, you know, and that's for me, that's what it's about. Yeah. And I got to ask you this very last thing before, uh, before we finalize the evening, have I been pronouncing your last name correctly? I don't know. How have you been pronouncing it? <laughs> I, I, don't, I wasn't sure if it's Jason Eek or Jason Ike. It, it is. Eek. Yes, it is. Eek. Eek. Okay. Okay. So I was right. Okay. I, I should have asked you that in the green room, not, yeah. <laughs> not right out in front of everybody else. Right. At but no, end. I was correct. So all good. Jason, thanks very much for spending your Tuesday evening with us. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. And uh, hopefully you'll join us again at some point, uh, make an appearance back and say hi. And uh, you're welcome anytime. Great. No, thanks for having me. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, maybe one day we'll we'll get out there and we'll be paddling side by each, right? And uh, That's good. En enjoy a sunset or something. <laughs> Sounds awesome. good. Yeah. I'm going to put you down in the green room. I'm going to close up the show. Stick around. I'd like to chat with you a little bit after the show here, if you got time, and uh, we'll go on sure. from there. Sure. Okay, buddy. Thanks sure. very much. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, everyone. Okay. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, Jason Eek is a very polished uh, producer when it comes to uh, shooting his videos and the uh, content that he puts out. Uh, you know what? It's a, it's a nice, relaxing watch. You know what? Some, some might even say it's best viewed over a glass of wine or, you know, a nice hot drink or something you know what i mean whatever whatever your your poison is so by all means check out his channel all his uh information is below you'll find his uh links to his youtube channels two of them not one but two uh also his uh website his instagram and his facebook uh follow him there because i don't think we really touched on it much but not only is a videographer but he's a great photographer as well and he's got some really good shots on his instagram uh, uh feed there as well so by all means please do check that out don't forget, next week, okay, is our festive season, our annual Christmas party here on Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. Uh, join us. You never know who might be showing up. Uh, we're going to be uh, reaching out to a bunch of our past guests over the last couple of years because all of our past guests have gotten to be kind of friends. And uh, you know what? It's always a good time to find out what everybody's up to, spread a little bit of holiday cheer. And uh, you know what? We will be putting out the link to join us on panel early. It doesn't matter who's on screen here. I'll try and get maybe four or five people here on panel so that we can all kind of just spread some cheer you know what it's it's a season to uh to be festive and uh we should all do that might even try and get uh good old saint nick to pop in here at some point too or you know what maybe even uh my good old friend farting santa claus yes you heard it here farting santa claus anyways uh don't forget that's that and then we'll be off until the new year we'll be back in january uh with a whole new line of shows for the second half of the season and uh, a few other announcements that will be coming down the pipe as well. So be sure to follow us on Facebook at Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. Okay, Facebook. And if you haven't already done so, you know what? It, it is so important to me, um, whether you like the show or not, but I'm sure you enjoyed the show if you stuck around this long. If See that little thumb down there. If you could just smash that for me before you leave tonight, that would be awesome. And you know what? If you enjoyed the channel and you're not already a subscriber, please do uh, hit that subscribe button. And... Uh, Follow us, hit the notification bell so that you'll know when we are going live on a weekly basis. Every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Anyways, great night tonight, everybody. Thanks very much for tuning in. Remember, people, keep the adventures alive. Until next week. <laughs>